Welcome to Startup Hack. Today we are going to talk about accessing the ASP.NET Core base URL. So let's jump right in. Make sure to check out the link down below because we always provide the code samples that you can pull down and follow along so you can see in our project. Let's start with the first topic, HTTP client and base URL, a love story. To get down to the devil in the details, let's look at standard HTTP client being constructed to call our API endpoint. So here's an example. So your HTTP client requires a base address prior to you making your API calls. Remember, of, of course, your base address is made up of number of bits. So we need to be able to either uh, retrieve the full base address for our API client or we need to construct it from the bits we have are on hand. Do you want to earn a hundred thousand dollars a year? Do you want to become a software developer within just three months? With our amazing course and awesome tutors, you never have to worry about getting stuck. We help students to learn skills that companies want to hire. We are a startup hack. Don't forget to subscribe our channel. So let's get started. So the second way is retrieving base URI inside your web application navigation manager. Let's start with the simplest means of grabbing the HTTP context base URI. If you are in an MVC or Blazor page, you can just inject the navigation manager into your page or component and you are good to go. So it's super easy to just grab the base URI of the navigation manager and you have this at your finger fingertips from within a page. Now the third way is retrieving base URI inside your web application IHTTP context accessor. Now there will be times when you don't have access to navigation manager or it's not practical to access the navigation manager in this manner your second port of call is to take advantage of IHTTP context accessor interface. The IHTTP context accessor is exactly what it sounds like. You can get details about the HTTP context including our base URI from this interface. You have to do a bit more work but not much. One of the clear benefits of using the IHTTP context accessor rather than the navigation manager is an interface is much more easily tested or mocked. The easiest way to make IHTTP context accessor interface ready for use in your application, you can simply amend your program.cs or startup.cs as so. Now you can simply need to inject the IHTTP context accessor interface in your classes as a dependency such as my API client class which is will call my API endpoint. As you can see from the above code blob you have to construct the base URL by creating a string of HTTP context request scheme and host values and that's it. So there is one more way retrieving base URI inside your web application with no HTTP requests involved. Webhost defaults dot server URLs key. So in both the above scenarios, we are able to fetch the base URI of our web app because we are in the midst of an HTTP request or response. That is when we fire up the app locally and navigate to the screens click buttons and so forth there is an HTTP context which we can access either indirectly through the navigation manager or more directly via the IHTTP context accessor interface. However, there are scenarios in your application where perhaps a web interaction is in not involved. My example in my app, I needed a hosted background service to process data behind the scenes and then mark a record so the front end could let us let the user know the processing was complete. If you're not familiar with the ASP.NET Core hosted services, I'll catch up you pretty quickly. In essence, I needed a long-term running background class which could 
process data without hogging up the web interactivity while this processing took place. However, this background task needed to call back on API endpoints on my internal API to fetch post and otherwise do CRUD with audit to data. This meant that the background service was outside the HTTP context. There was no HTTP request or response involved for me to fetch the cur current URL either from the navigation manager or from the HTTP contact context accessor. There's a way to fetch the base URL of your ASP.NET Core app without using either of the above means. When your app is starting up, you can fetch its URL by accessing the web host settings. How do we do this? Simple as we could be. What you get back is precisely what is set as the default URLs of your website. This can be a delimited collection of URLs usually one of the HTTPs and one for HTTP. You can find this value in your properties or launch settings.json file for local debugging pur purposes. In order to make this useful, you can use ASP.NET Core dependency injection to create a simple interface or class to hold this value and return the appropriate value to use when calling your HTTP client. With a simple implementation of now all you need to do is to create this class at application startup and inject it into the IOC. And once again, this is done. You just need to use this as you had expected in another class, one which doesn't have access to HTTP contacts. Thank you for watching this video. There are a number of different ways to fetch your current ASP.NET Core applications based URL and hopefully you can take advantage of the examples I have provided. So don't forget to subscribe our channel and hit the bell icon for latest updates. To joining our course, you can simply go to our website called startuphack.com. Thank you.